By the evening of January 17th, 2014, my sister posted her last Instagram photo and it was of Rittenhouse Square in Philadelphia around 6 or 7 p.m. at night. She died that night. And I think looking back on it, it's amazing that in her last few moments of life, she chose to post on Instagram. And I don't know why. And I don't think I ever will know why. I don't know if this was kind of her last goodbye to all of us, if the picture meant something. It's a, it's a beautiful picture. It shows Rittenhouse Square at night with all these lights lit up. You know, Madison was always that person. She was always kind of looking to find the beauty in things. I don't know if she just wanted to leave us with a little piece of beauty, but that's what she did in her last few moments of life. You know, she didn't call anyone for help. She didn't seek anyone out for help. Instead, she took a picture and she posted it to Instagram. And the question that we get the most as a family um, after Madison's death is, signs people want to know you know did you see the signs and i understand it um you know people mean well they want to know is there anything that i can look out for in my kids or my friends or my family you know what are the signs and for a long time i didn't really know how to answer that question and then i finally figured it out and so now what i tell people is we saw the signs but we didn't know what they meant because the signs of depression, of anxiety, of suicidal thoughts is not the same for everybody. It's not like when you break your foot and you go in for an x-ray. Can the, can the doctor just look at that x-ray and see, you know, like, oh, right there is that crack. And then we put a cast on it and this is how it's gonna heal. Mental illness and suicidal thoughts and ideation is just so different. It's different what causes it for people. It's different in the treatment that helps people. You know, some people can just go to therapy and that's enough and that's great. And some people need medication and that's enough and that's also great. Um, it's just, it's so different. And the signs of it are also so different. So what I really try to tell people to look out for is a big change in, you know, your, your son, your daughter, your friend, uh, your spouse, your partner, you know them probably the best if you're looking out for them. And if you see a change, whether it be weight loss, weight gain, sleeping, change in behavior, change in mood, um, even just, you know, what they're saying to you, if they're all of a sudden they're like, oh, what's the point? Or, you know, I wouldn't mind if I was hurting myself or, you know, you know what's different in them. And if you see that change, look out for it, say something, and have an, have an open and honest conversation with them. That's the first step. So on January 21st, 2014, in the middle of a huge snowstorm, we had my sister's funeral. She was 19 years old. And I don't share her story or pictures of her funeral um, or her, anything about her death for shock or sympathy. Um, I share it because my sister, like I said in the beginning, was beautiful, kind, outgoing, smart, had a ton of friends, had a great future ahead of her, was in an Ivy League school, succeeding, um, you know, running track, was in great shape, was getting a 3.8 GPA, kind of had her whole life in front of her, had everything going for her, and she became depressed and she became suicidal and she took her own life. So I share this because if it can happen to Madison, it can happen to anybody. If anything, Madison had everything going for her in life and she still became depressed. She still became anxious. She still needed therapy. She probably needed medication and she still took her own life. So, I just don't want anyone to ever think that they're immune to this um, or to even ever look at like their friends or the people who are closest to them and say, 
well, what do they have to be depressed about? They seem great. They have everything going for them because it really can happen to anybody.